Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm with another update on my aquaponics greenhouse. We've made a few updates since uh, two weeks ago when I posted the last video. Mainly to get weather ready, we have some storms coming uh, tomorrow. And things were too open and I had a uh, shade cloth on the top. I was trying to get off this greenhouse and uh, well, it turns out I had some screws I had to remove from the top up here that were just... Uh, uh, a little too high to reach and so I had to rent a ladder and uh, it enabled me to do some repair work inside. Now this is a temporary door cover you might say for my, uh, what's going to be my window for my swamp coolers. Uh, we're not going to need a swamp cooler this, or this time of the year now. We'll put that in next spring. And uh, I've got pipe to weight this plastic down. We're going to put some hoops on it uh, to hold it in place here. Excuse me, I'll try to pan a little slower. And we'll put some more hoops on it so I can lift it up here so it don't get too hot in the greenhouse. So I'll be able to raise and lower it to let air in and out. So now we'll go inside. And here's the other thing. I'd ask a lot of people if I could grow lettuce on uh, one inch styrofoam board. Now these are pretty good, says, pretty good sized heads of lettuce. And they have no problem on this board. Now it's a little dirty right now unfortunately. We'll have to clean this up. But this is one inch thick uh, plywood, not plywood, uh, styrofoam board with uh, 32 holes in each uh, two before sheet. These sheets are cut from whole sheets and the holes are drilled with a two inch hole saw. And I don't, I'm not using net cups, I'm using uh, uh, true aquaponics uh, grow grips. And uh, they're working good for this size lettuce and I think they're uh, figure out how to make them work overall. So this appears to be a, a nice clean solution for putting plants in the styrofoam board. Now another thing I've uh, done, if you lift this up, since I've covered everything with styrofoam, uh, there's, there's not all the algae I had in here in the past. So uh, last video I had an algae bloom growing in here pretty bad. And uh, we've got that out. And you can see uh, that's the intake where the water gets sucked out of the grow bed. Got a little dimple, it's trying to form a whirlpool. I've raised that uh, 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 inlet pipe just as high as I could without getting a whirlpool in it. I did have a filter on it, it was stopping up, it would stop up with uh, stuff and uh, cause the pump to want to cavitate and I couldn't have that so I took it off. Shouldn't be anything in here that causes any problem anyway. So, um, and I've got it raised to just as high as I can raise it without starting a whirlpool. That way if I have a failure it won't drain the tank entirely dry. And that's very important. We don't want the tank entirely dried out. So, as you can see, I've got some lettuces in here. Now, these are lettuces that I bought and had to wash the roots out. That's why this is dirty a little bit on here. Uh, I want to get some that was mature to start the system out. Uh, the water's been running with fish in it for a couple weeks now, and so it should be producing some nitrate soon. Uh, an aquaponics system, you have uh, the fish in those tanks up there produce ammonia. And then uh, a bacteria called uh, nitrosomonas take the ammonia and turn that into nitrite. The nitrite uh, gets converted by a bacteria called nitrosomonas, or nitrobacters, pardon me. The nitrobacters convert nitrite to nitrate. And then uh, both, all three of ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate are toxic to fish. The plants take the nitrate out because that's what the plants like. So by having the plants and uh, both those forms of bacteria in here. We close the nitrogen cycle and uh, then we fertilize the plants and clean the water for the fish. It's a nice little uh, symbiosis. Now another update since uh, last video is I have about a thousand starts of lettuce and I'm growing five different varieties. That's your butter crunch. Now that's some of the stuff I bought in flats. I'm setting out in here now, but this is about ready to go in there too. Actually it is. This is red sale. This was planted a week prior to that. Okay, I better pan the camera more slowly. This here is uh, red sails. This is a uh, uh, prize head. And over here I've got another lettuce called, uh, well, pardon me, I got that wrong. This is prize head, and that will be oak leaf. Hard to read my labels. I got all this stuff labeled down here. 
as you can see the labels that's butter crunch and so what I've got is I got about three weeks of the starts going here I've got several of these flats I've got over a thousand starts in these flats and I've got four that are covered up right now basically uh, they, the, the ceilings need dark to get started moist and dark I accidentally had that one uncovered here to show the difference I don't know if you can see but these little guys are actually sprouting they're actually sprouting I'm using perlite as the medium so I can just get the plants out of it and stick them in the grow grips there's no plugs being used here now perlite I don't know it's got mixed blessings I'm not a big fan of it to be honest I just happen to have it these uh, I accidentally left this uncovered and notice these seeds aren't starting but I've got them covered now so hopefully they'll recover and get started with these prize head seeds and uh, yeah these uh, uh, one inch styrofoam panels are actually pretty robust I've got to see a flat of tomatoes sitting in here I set them down here just because it's so uh, it can get cold at night and I figure they're better off next to the water and there's some sitting here I did have them on the colder morning sitting there but anyway, you can, I'm going to put wire on this frame where I'm putting more uh, flats on it. Right now, I, I'm putting them all right over the cross two before us. And we're still got all the plumbing supplies here. I got all my water flows worked out. As you can see now, I've got the 90, uh, 45 degree elbows in here. So all the water's not splashing up on my panel. You might have saw in a previous video. And by the way, do watch the previous videos I've got posted. And. Uh, we come in here we can see I've got um, I don't know if I'm probably not see them too well here those fish are bluegill and here I've got the the top that's open for the inlet for the water going in here that breaks the siphon and there's another piece that goes down in the water where it, where it uh, takes the water in such that it's not picking up the floater trash on top of the tank and it's not going pulling off the bottom so the solid stuff falls to the bottom and when I need to drain that out I've got those to do it and I showed you the pipe with the drain back there at the end of the grow bed it comes all the way around now, excuse all the plastic I was using that to cover this stuff up when we have frost one night yeah, and there's still plumbing parts here pardon me we're still in construction so it comes to the pump here and back out it comes up and over into the grow beds and I've got various valves I have to adjust and tweak the water flow from time to time these valves put water in and here's the drains and there's three drains total here one off each fish tank these fish tanks are 330 gallons a piece with about 300 gallons of water in right now because the water level is right about here to 300 gallon mark so I got 900 gallons of water here and about 4,000 out here. So there's somewhere in the order of 5,000 gallons of water in my system. And this is my air blower, which blows air in to aerate the uh, roots of the lettuce. So what I'm going to do is I will be starting the smaller stuff up at this side eventually. And this is going to be a, a um, kind of a float uh, conveyor basically that takes all the lettuce down this way. And uh, in any event, uh, we can see if I raise the panels up here and yeah, we've been cutting these and a lot better cut we don't sell the green stuff you can see the air being blown in the system here there's my fans last time I was up here I hit the zoom accidentally this one's covered and again I've got uh, the same philosophy here I'm about to put some uh, rope hoops up here to catch this so I can roll it up and hold it in place up there so I don't cook everything in here hopefully uh, on a sunny day because I know that's what's going to happen so like I said this place is still very much under construction this is the beginnings of my aquaponic system it is in operation uh, I had to do some repair work on the roof I rented that ladder today these uh, cross struts across the top are intended to give a uh, a little wind resistance because I'm expecting the main wind load to come from that direction where it's the largest open area because I've got look you look almost straight up and see trees here on the back side even though they're about 40 feet away 
I have tall trees there. And, and that's a bit of a hazard, by the way, but I recognize that. And uh, it's already bit me in one place. And this greenhouse cover has been here since the spring, early spring. I got one little hole up there, which we just patched today. And uh, that was from my limb. And apparently our construction of this beam here, uh, board must have rubbed the top and wind stressed it further and it had some had a hole up there that we taped over so and by the way that's 16 feet up there and uh, these poles are 20 foot long poles 20 foot four befores which are kind of hard to find I can only get those from Home Depot and uh, they are four feet in the ground and by the way I was able to locate those holes by seeing things like where the water was dripping. But sometimes it's kind of hard to see up there that plastic when you're. So, uh, and the, the uh, shade cloth I had on here is gone now. I took the shade cloth off as we're getting into the cooler weather. We've already had a frost here, all this light frost. So, still working this. This is all still in development. But uh, that gives you some idea what we're doing here. Anyway, this is just a nice little update. And I'll do a little garden update here in a moment and some other things. But uh, that's the system. And uh, uh, you can see with the panel in here, and the screen wire, that uh, she's all in working order. And uh, let me say that, uh, yeah, I got my log barn, my tractor, my rabbit hutch. I'm going to do a lot more videos out here soon. I'll be doing videos on uh, worm raising, worm farming. Uh, if I think my first video, and I'm going to do it probably maybe this afternoon, is why raise worms? Why get worms? That's the basic question. Then we'll talk about the basics of worm raising in a subsequent video. I'm going to do videos, a lot of videos on worm farming, aquaponics, raising microgreens, and raised bed garden. Uh, I've had a day job and so uh, uh, it was pretty intense the last several months plus I ran a power grid defense conference so my garden's a little uh, suffering for that right now that and spend all the time and effort building this greenhouse so uh, this is taking a lot of time but uh, we're making good progress now and so if you enjoy the video hit the like button and uh, please subscribe because I need all the subscribers I can get that's always a good thing so please cry, subscribe bang the bell so you get updates yeah it's been a couple weeks so I'm gonna try to make at least a video a week going forward anyway I thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day and uh, happy Halloween that's what it is today anyway take care bye